All praise to the Most High. Shalom, brothers. Shalom, sisters. All praise to the Most High. We give thanks and glory to our Father for allowing us to come together and to fellowship in his name and to fellowship in his holy commandments. As we uh, seek and we endeavor to get the kingdom. That's what this is all about. That's what we're here for. We were called. Give me. Who's reading? Who's, who is it? Okay. Uh, give me uh, Peter 1 and 10. The calling. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's get that first. Let's open up with that. I want to. I want to go over a couple of scriptures, but let me give the title of the class. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to Captain Akar early, and I said that I wanted to kind of go into a topic that's going to go in perhaps more than one direction. And some shoes might get thrown. If y'all understand what I mean. Huh? Just don't, don't, don't yelp when the shoe come out there. Then we'll know something's up. Y'all all right? But anyway... Um, the name of today's class is called The Mindset of Warriors on Both Battlefields. The Mindset of Warriors on Both Battlefields. Now, like I was saying earlier, when I uh, was talking about this class, I was conferring with uh, Captain Dakar on it because we were t talking about uh, various... Uh, situations that come up throughout the body of IUIC, not particularly here or in one congregation or another congregation, just in general. These issues do come up. Um, I travel a lot in terms of the different schools, and I see that there are certain uh, situations that occur in various schools, and, I, and you, you, we will begin to notice that it seems to be a trend that's going on and the uh the uh, the 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 job of the leaders is to watch for that thing as a matter of fact let me get that first give me um ezekiel three seventeen. i think it is then we'll come to this ezekiel three seventeen. because this is what this is what our job is as watchmen as book. watchmen yes it's the book of ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 mm -hmm. son of man I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Watchmen are leaders, okay? The Most High said, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. If he's making the, the leaders the uh, watchmen over the house of Israel, he's not just watching over the men. He's also watching over the women. He's watching over the children, watching over the whole flock, the whole state of the flock. That's not a small weight to carry. The responsibility of a watchman is very heavy. Okay, let's read it again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. A watchman, a watchman. So the job of a watchman is to watch for the flock because he's entrusted with the flock. Uh, let me see if I want to read on down. Read, read, read on. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Therefore, because you are the watchman, I need you watchmen, you leaders, to hear the word that comes from me. So in other words, the leaders have to rule the people with the word of God. Not by emotion, not by feel good. They have to use the words of the Most High. They have to operate according to the Most High. I want you to, I want you to keep in mind about this watchman. Read that, third, read that 17th verse again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I have made you leaders a watchman unto the house of Israel. So we, the watchmen, are responsible. And all of you men are being taught to be watchmen, to be leaders, to be fathers, to be husbands, to be guardians, to be the protector, to be the, the sustaining entity of the nation you're the military of the nation you're the teacher of the nation you're the, you're, you're the sustainer of the nation that's how heavy that watchman title goes it's not a small label 
everything goes to that man. The Most High puts that man over the nation to watch the whole nation and to see the uh, furtherance, the permanence, to see the uh, the, the uh, progress of the nation, to protect the nation, to educate the nation. All of these things come from you men. That's part of your battlefield. Because we, as men, we're in captivity. And our oppressors is trying to keep us from realizing manhood. So that's a battle in itself. Here we are born of our mothers and fathers. And when we come out, we ask in the spirit, what is my purpose? Why am I born? And all of us have a man spirit in us. And, uh, and, uh, and the essence of a man is to rule. Not to be ruled, but to rule. He is to rule his own dominion, rule his own family, rule his nation, government. All of that comes underneath the banner of man. Y'all all right? Read it again. Son of man. I'm, done now. I'm, I'm talking about the battlefields now. So keep in mind about the man's battlefield. Read. Son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I, God, have made you men a watchman over the house of Israel. So that's the reason why you were born. That's the reason why you was put on this earth. The reason why the sperm met the egg was for you to come out and rule. Period. And if we don't get to do that, our spirits are messed up. Why do you think so many of our people are on taking dope, drugs? Drinking excessively, doing all kinds of craziness because they're trying to fill a void that is missing. You dig what I'm saying? Why would a man shoot dope up in his arms to get high so that he doesn't have to remember the fact that he's not living up to the potential of being a man? Can you dig it? So it's very important for us to understand manhood. Now I'm saying this to the men because I said that's one part of the the battlefield that the man is fighting. The woman is the other battlefield. Uh-oh. Why in the world would de dealing with the woman be considered a battlefield? Because other men, not us, other men have set up headquarters in their heads. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you're in a battle trying to win her to your side. Can y'all dig it? You're trying to win her over to be your aid. You're trying to win her over to be your comfort. To be your uh, partner. To be your aid, like the scriptures say. Your help me. But when you meet her, somebody else has already set up headquarters in her head. So you got to deal with all of that first. Before you can properly make her to where she could be your aid. In slavery, she learned how to be their aid. Willie Lynch, and I've seen people try to denounce the Willie Lynch uh, records and try to say it's made up. I don't even go that far in the argument. I say rather, it's, first of all, it ain't made up. It's, it's true. But let's say it was for argument's sake. If I'm reading what it says and then I look out here and see what I see, what the hell are you telling me that it's BS for when I actually see the results of it? Y'all all right? So when he makes a point in that book to say that when, he, when they were breaking her, the, what, the, 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 the chapter in the book that says uh, the process of breaking the African woman, meaning the Israelite woman, y'all all right? Breaking her, they said that you must, you must use, he said, do not hesitate to use the bull whip to extract the last bit of resistance, use another word, use the last bit of resistance out of her to get her to come to uh, conform completely to your will. That's what they did to us as slavery. Did they not do that, brothers? Did they not do that to our women? So when they did that, they reversed her mind to be more supportive of him. What does the word or the name woman mean? Who knows? I'm going to, you. 
What does a, what does a woman mean? Say it again. Yes. Yes. Well, just tell me what do you th what do you think it means? Okay. You knew. You're brand. New, you knew in this in the body. Okay. Don't. Okay. Don't worry. You're okay. You're okay. You're all right. So just getting it in there. So just stay with me. This is this is an This is a uh, forum of education here. Let's get the Bible. Let's get the scripture. Don't let me forget where I'm, where I'm, when I come back to this, all right? Um, yeah, Genesis. Yes, sir. Listen. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 23. And and Adam said... Call it again. I don't, is it 223? 223, I'm okay. sorry. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. She shall be called woman she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man that's what the word woman means because she was taken out of man the word woman means of man that's what it literally means so she's taken out of man you follow me you with me now okay everybody else with me i ain't gonna single anybody out i just sometimes i just make connection with certain brothers certain sisters y'all all right you, you cool so read it again and adam said this is now bone of my bone and adam said about eve this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and she is flesh of my flesh come on she shall be called woman she shall be named woman why the word because means it's going to tell you why because she because meaning this is the reason why she was named woman she was taken out of man because she was taken out of man that's the reason why that name is put on her so whenever you have women ruling over men that is out of order man wasn't taken from woman when it's talking about adam and eve woman was taken out of man give me that in corinthians so her job is to look up to you not the other way around a lot of us men, we're weak because we haven't been in a role of authority. We have not been, and we have not been in the role of being real men. So we are uncomfortable with real leadership. We can run around with a gun. We can run around doing all kind of so-called man stuff out in the street. But when it comes to really dealing righteously in your household, dealing righteously in your nation, that takes real wisdom. That takes real manhood and leadership. Read it. You got it? Corinthians 11 and 8. It's the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm still dealing with the woman thing. Chapter 11, verse 8. Now, I'm going to say this here, too, because, like I said, I've been around. I've been in a different congregation, and, and I hear different things. Whenever we would go through scriptures like this here, you would hear some cackling, oh, they woman bashing. How many of y'all men heard that before? We read in the Bible. And they're talking about women bashing. How in the world does that make sense? And some men, with some men, their weak selves will be reading it. And then they will allow that psychology to be like, you know what, you're right. And close the Bible. Read it. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 8. For the man is not of the woman. This is talking about Adam. The most high made Adam. But the, but the woman of the man. But the woman is of the man. Not the other way around. You'll understand that. That's what the Bible says. She's called woman. Not he's called woman. She's called woman. Then after that. Children are born. From the woman. But man plants the seed in the woman. So the child that's being born is of that man. Everybody's with me so far? Okay. Let's go back to uh, Genesis. No, where was we at before? Uh, we read that. Let's go back to Ezekiel. So now that we've laid that foundation down. I'm still dealing with the mindset 
of warriors on both battlefields. So I'm still making a point about the warriors is another name for the watchman. Read it. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. I have made you a warrior. I have made you a leader. I have made you the, um, the father, the patriot of the nation of Israel. Read it again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Go ahead. Therefore. Because, because therefore means because of that. Therefore, these are your instructions as a watchman. Go ahead. Hear the word at my mouth. I need you men to hear the words that's coming from me. This is what God is saying to you men. Go ahead. And give them warning from me. And give everybody warning from God. So is it important for the woman to listen to you? I can't hear you. Give them. He didn't say give them hugs and kisses. He said give them what? What's the word? Warning. So the warning from God is going to come from who? From the men. I want y'all to get that in your head. Read it again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Go ahead. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Therefore, I need you to hear the words that come from me to you men. That's the reason why he calls you gods. Give me that. Psalms. Let me show you how far that goes. Warriors on both battlefields. So you're, you're battling for your supremacy. Uh-oh. They done got, hold it now. They've gotten us psyched out. We live in a white supremacy world. But if you speak against it, they say you are a black supremacist. How does that make sense? How does that make sense? Give me the scripture. Read it. Read it where you got it. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. Hold it. I have said, you men are gods. That's supreme there. Go ahead. And all of you. And all of you men are children of the most high. You are the children of the most high. The supreme being. So if you are the children of the supreme being, you are supreme. That's why you are called gods. You're meaning you are the powers of this planet. That's what it's talking about. You're the watchmen of this planet. So your job is not easy. Your job is nothing to play with and something simple. Go up to the fifth verse. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 5. They know not. The people. The people that's underneath the gods, the Israelites. The name Israel itself. Who can tell me what the name Israel itself means? Hold it. It's when the angel said to uh, the name is uh, you have power with God. Say it again. Have power with God. Have power with, with God. God. Okay, where can we read that at? Uh, actually, it's in... Um, give me it's, uh, 32, 32. Oh, Somebody get it. No, I know you know it's in the Bible. Who got it? I got it. Right. He was, he was close to it. Genesis, Genesis chapter 32. Somebody get it and read it. Somebody get it and read it. The book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Thy name, this is when, uh, when uh, Jacob wrestled with the angel all day and all night long until the morning time. And the angel renamed Jacob. That's what we're reading about here. Everybody's with me. Read. Read but, it again. And he you got it? Everybody got it? Make sure everybody's got it. Tell them where you're at. I want to make sure everybody's reading it. The book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Thy name, Jacob. Jacob, listen, your name is no longer going to be called Jacob. 
but Israel. But Israel shall be your name. For as a prince. Why? That's what four means. Four means because. This is the reason why I'm naming you Israel, Jacob. Because what? For as a prince hast thou power with God. As a prince have you power with God. That's the reason why that name Israel is put on you. Y'all understand that? So once we know this. There's a certain way that we must carry ourselves. That's the reason why they wanted to change that name. That's the reason why they never wanted us to have that name. Give me that Psalms. We're coming back to this. Give me Psalms 82. I'm um, 83. Psalms 83. Next chapter over. Psalms 83 verse 3 or 2. Start with verse 2. 2 to, two to 4. It's the book of Psalms chapter 83. In verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Now for you new brothers, it's, it's good for you to take notes as well. If you can remember what we're saying, which is, I doubt it, because of the way we go through scriptures, you'll be forgetting which scriptures. Damn, what scripture did he go through? What one did, so you want to write those scriptures down if you can, if you got some kind of pad and paper. I, you know, It's a requirement that you take notes when you come in here. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, and verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. For lo, the enemies of the Israelites have made a, tu a tumult, meaning a argument of how to destroy the Israelites. The, the whole of the nations have sided together to come against the Israelites. Listen to what it's going to say. Read. And they that hate thee, and the nations that hate the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, have lifted up the head. They lifted up themselves as if they are the people of God and called us niggers, called us spicks, called us wetbacks, spooks, monkeys, jungle bunnies, and stuff like this here. That's what they've done to us, African American. They've lifted up their heads and changed our name, changed our relationship with God. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel. And this took crafty counsel in order for them to do this. Part of the crafty counsel is when they went and messed up our women's minds. To turn our women against us. To make them rebel against you trying to come back into your greatness. Go ahead. Against thy people. They have, cra they have, craft they have set up crafty counsel against the people of God. Go ahead. And consulted against thy hidden ones. We're the hidden ones now because the people in the earth don't know who we are. Though they're learning about it now because the Israelites are back. But the objective is for nobody to find out about who we truly are. That's the reason why we have all of this animosity against us. The SPLC, the different news, uh, the newspapers, all of the nations, everything. Everybody's trying to stop this gospel from coming out. So it takes a warrior to fight past all of that. Y'all understand that? It takes a warrior to fight past all of that. And in your war, your woman is supposed to be behind you. It's supposed to be your comfort and your aid to help you fight this fight. Now I'm going to take it while I'm holding that statement. Don't lose where you're at. Stay there. I'm going to mention something because the other nations did this when they had their time of captivity. Meaning like, for instance, when the Persians ruled. You had Persia was ruling. And then you had the Greeks, the Edomites, who were serving tribute to them. Y'all dig what I'm saying? The Greeks didn't always rule. Like when they tell you Alexander the Great, what they call him, the Great, 333 BC. Prior to that, the Greeks were not ruling. So they were here as Edomites or Idumeans. They were on this earth, but they had to pay tribute to the ruling kingdom which was the Persians then. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So as they were subjected to the Persians, how did they get to overthrow Persia? They had to make sure that their women were with them. Their women had to be in support of them. Their women had to be an aid to them because Alexander, he had our records. He understood the scriptures. I don't mean like we do. But they have, an, they have a, uh, a library in Alexandria, Egypt, 
that Alexander commissioned. He said, I want all everybody's records put in this library. So he had the records of Israel, the records of Greece, I mean the records of uh, Persia, Babylon, everybody's, Egypt, all that. Because he wanted to know everybody's strong points and their weak points. So once he understood, like you read about Holophanes in the Apocrypha, and the question that they asked, they said, well, who is that people up on the hill? And what is their number? And what is their army? He needed to know all of these things because they, they wanted to know. Why do you want to know these things? Because you want to know how to break their power. Before the conquistadors came over to this land to destroy Gad and Reuben, before the same conquistadors went over to Hispaniola, which is known as uh, Santo Domingo, before the, before the conquistadors went through Panama, before they went through Cuba, before they went to uh, uh, um, uh, South America, Panama, all the areas, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, before they went there, they needed to know what made the people a people in the first place in order to destroy them. They needed to know what binded them. They needed to know what, how, what, where is their strength? That's what it said in the Apocrypha. Holophanes was asking. He said, what is their strength? What is their unify? What unifies them? What is their symbol? What strengthens them? That's what happened to us when our temples were destroyed, when I talked about that last night on our radio show. When they talked about, when they went to destroy our temple during the time uh, b before the Maccabean period when we got it back and cleansed the temple, hence the Feast of Dedication, they knew that by destroying our temple, that was a binding tie that strengthened us. Y'all all right? So the objective of an enemy is to find out where your strength is and to, str and to break it. So that's what Alexander did to overthrow Persia. He said, well, we, what we need to do, we need to make sure that our women is with us. They weren't ruling. But what were, the, what were the Edomite women doing? Taking care of their husbands. When their husbands go out to war, the husbands comes back home, the wives is patching them up, fixing them up, giving them all kind of everything to send them back on the battlefield because I need you to win so that we can all rejoice. That's a woman that understands. Y'all follow me? That's what happened. And they were, they were not ruling then. Y'all follow what I'm saying? They learned all of this from our records. They learned all of this by studying our records. So that's where we're at now. So now let's go back to where we read that, where we was at. Pick up from where you was at. The book of Psalms. So I'm still talking about us now. I'm coming back to us. And what and what happened to us? Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. The nations have said, come and let us cut off the powers of God. Cut them off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel. That the what? The name of Israel. The same name that was given to Jacob. They said, we want to get that out. God gave it to us. And they said, we want to take it away. Read it. That the what? That the name of Israel. May be no more in remembrance. So once they taken out the name of Israel from your mind and out of your spirit, you will be what your mind is. As a man thinketh, so is he. If you can, rem if you can make this brother think that he's not a captain, that he's not a man of God, and you make him think that he's a child, he will begin to act like a child. What do they do with us on television? They make us think that we are drug dealers, buffoons, pants hanging down, and they reflect that back to us and we begin to imitate that. They cause us to think that we are what they show us on television. And that's a, huh? Yeah, we accept it, but that's not who we are. So whenever you don't know your own history, any his story will do. So they can give us any image and we'll accept that because we don't know what naturally belongs 
in this hole in our head. We don't know the knowledge that belongs in this cavity in our head. So we will allow anything to fill it because the name of Israel was originally there, but that was taken out during slavery. Everybody's with me. Read that verse again, the whole verse. Book of Psalm, chapter 83, verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. So if you don't remember that you're the Israelites, how are you going to react? How are you going to carry yourselves? You're going to carry yourselves as the way your mind is formulated or framed to be. So if we are framed to be Negroes, we would be Negroes. If we were framed to be drug dealers, we would be drug dealers. We would be hoes or whoremongers, drug dealers, stick-up kids, bums. We would, we, we, we would attach ourselves to that. That's how important it is for us to recognize who we truly are. And we as watchmen, our job is to put the right information in your mind. Let's go back to that. Thank you. Let's go back to that watchman. So again, the mindset of warriors, because we men are warriors, and we're on that battlefield trying to establish our, oh, back to Psalms, I'm sorry. Psalms 82, that's what I needed. Back to Psalms 82. We're trying to establish our supremeness. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 5. Now, Every time I, when I say that, I know people are gonna gonna attribute this kind of a language as hate speech, as negative speech. But if you're called the chosen people, you're chosen by God. Does that make you supreme? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Let's get that. Let's read some supremacy out the Bible, Deuteronomy. Let's see. You the Israelites. Let's see. The hell with this. I'm trying to make us think that we're just ordinary people. You're the princes of God, and you need to remember that and carry that in your head. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. God says to the Israelites, he said, for, for what? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. To be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. What does, what does the word above sound like? What's the synonym for above? Super, supreme, superior. Read it again. For thou art an holy for people. For thou. He didn't say it for everybody. He said for thou, Israel. For uh, thou art an holy people you are a true people to me god said that go ahead unto the lord thy god unto the lord thy god meaning only you he didn't pull other people to him he only pulled you to him go ahead the lord thy god had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth now imagine the brother that wants to put a needle in his arm. Imagine a brother that's on a corner getting wasted with all kinds of liquor and stuff like that. And a man that's destroying his own soul and doing all kinds of filthy things. And then you pour this wine into his head. Here, I'm talking about this Bible. You pour those verses into his mind and make him realize that hope that he's a prince of God. He has to take this and well, hell, uh, gods don't do this. Gods don't be getting wasted with alcohol. Gods are stand up people. Gods, real, gods recognize that they have a responsibility. Not only to themselves, but to this whole planet Earth. The whole Earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Did you know that? The whole earth is earnestly waiting for the creature, waiting for you, for the manifestation. Give me that. The book of Romans, 
chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature. For the earnest expectation of the creature. Go ahead. Waited for the manifestation. Waited for the what? The manifestation. Waited for the what? The manifestation. I want to drill in on that word. Waited for the manifestation. Manifestation meaning in growth. Manifestation meaning that you're coming from a, a clot, embryo, fetus, a baby, a toddler, a boy, teenager, a man. Manifest it. You manifest it from small to great. The earth is waiting for us to manifest to being God's. Let that rest on your head a little bit. Think about that. The trees are going to rejoice when you men rule again. The birds are going to rejoice when you rule again. Everything on the planet is going to be happy when you rule again. But if we don't know this, we would think ourselves as nothing and we would do nothing type of things. When you get this oil in your head, it changes how you think. It changes how you envision. It changes how you perceive. It gives you the power to plan. It gives you the power to create and, and, and imagine and envision things. But if you're looking at yourselves as a nothing, you won't think any of these things. But once you begin to realize that the whole earth and everything is waiting for you. Not your, not over here, not, not somebody over there or over there, but it's waiting for you. Then you know that you must do something. If the whole earth, huh, the earth is waiting on poor little old black me. Get that crack out of your head. When I came into this truth, Many years ago, one of the things that I wanted to do, especially in IOIC, as y'all know, Bishop Nathaniel, he has a mind of a warrior, the mind of a of, of creative thinker, and I wanted to be part of that. Y'all all right? So what we began to do, we began to talk about vision. Give me that. Don't let me lose my point on this, uh, brothers. I'm coming back to, remind me, I'm going back to Psalms, okay? Psalms 82. Don't let me forget that. I need Psalms 82. I want to go back to that. Um, what was I about to say? Vision. Give me that. Book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Yes, sir. Listen now. Where there is no vision. Where there is no vision. This is what. I was talking about when, when I came into IUIC and we had like-minded brothers in IUIC, I'm talking about in the beginning stages, the objective was to instill vision. If we are truly going to be what the Bible says, we are gods, we must act like gods. Don't be thinking like, like Negroes, color people, coon shine. Think like gods. Y'all all right? If a man could sit back and think and imagine a whole community and see houses and buildings and schools and all of that, what the hell is wrong with us that we can't do this? When we first started talking about building things, people, ne Negroes or Negro lights, let me say it that way. I'm talking about Israelites who are still Negro in spirit. Y'all dig what I'm saying? In other words, they're carrying the name Israel, but it's not in their heads. They don't believe that they could do what the Bible says do. They're just carrying a Bible. So when we, we said that, listen, if it's in the Bible, we can make this thing happen. Read, read that and then give me Matthew about the light shine, 5 and 16. Read that and then give me the other one. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. A leader, a ruler, a watchman understands that if he 
a father, let me use that, a father of his house, a leader, a ruler, if he does not understand the importance of vision, if he doesn't have a path, a direction for the people, the people will perish. That's what that verse is saying. Read it. Where there is no vision. Where there is no vision. The people perish. That's what's wrong with black people. Whenever you had leaders that tried to come up and give us vision, your enemies killed them. And we allowed it because, hell, he wasn't, you know, whoa. we didn't value leadership like we still don't. But try to take down the leaders of the other nations and see what happened. Because they understand the importance of leadership. They understand the importance of the symbol of leadership, like the Twin Towers. Like I talked about last night. When those Twin Towers went down, all of America went under therapy. Every, all the Edomites' was, minds were depleted, destroyed. Oh my God, how can they do this? Oh! They were screaming like crazy because that represented permanence. That represented supremacy. That represented stability. But when it comes to our leaders, we don't think like that. So when a leader is in front, his job is to establish vision, is to establish direction, is to establish goal, is to establish vision, is to give permanence. This is the way we need to go. And the guide that the leaders that the Most High is talking about is going to guide you with this Bible. Y'all all right? Read. Where you at? Um, you want Matthew 5? Yes, sir. Going back to what I was talking about when we was in IUIC at the beginning stages. Read. Book of Matthew 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. Ye, you Israelites. This is talking about the men and the women now. The whole nation. But the women are not going to be right until you men lead them right. If they are of man, they have to be taught by man. And if you as man is not teaching them, some other man is teaching them. Because she's of man. A lot of people running around here talking about something. No, she don't need a man. You lying. If she's not admiring you, she's admiring another type of man. Period. I'm not going to believe nothing else. I don't care how quote unquote masculine they try to be. There's an idea of a man in their head that they're following. Because she cannot escape what God made her. He made her to follow man. And if it's not you that they're following, they're going to follow the idea of another man. That's what Willie Lynch and slavery was all about. That's the other battlefield that we have to fight on. To get her to be with us. Y'all all right? Where am I at? The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. You Israelites, you men and your women that support you, the Israelite man and woman, you are the light of the planet Earth. That's telling you that the whole Earth was made for us. There's a lot of information in this Bible that a lot of our people if, you know, don't really consider. The whole planet Earth would not have been made if God wasn't going to put you on it. I know that sounds supreme and racist or whatever else you want to call it, but that's exactly what God said in the Bible. If God was not going to put you on the Earth, he would not have made the Earth. That's recorded in the Bible. I'll read that before we go. Give me that real quick since I didn't said it. <laughs> I just have to touch these things. I'm sorry. Don't let me forget where I'm at. I know I'm going all over the place. I'm going to get back to my topic. Y'all all right? Give me that. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 55. Second Ezra. The brothers that are new, do y'all know what I'm saying when I said Second Ezra? Everybody's with me? The apocryphal books. When I say the apocryphal books, help the brothers out. Whoever don't have it, help them out. Okay, I see. He's got it. He's got one. Okay. Second Ezra. So you can understand, if you don't know, 
the apocrypha books, the reason why it was called apocrypha because it was taken out of the original King James Bible. Okay? We're in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 55. Yeah. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 55. Start with 54. Verse 54. Since we were talking about Adam earlier. And after you got it? Hold it, hold it. I'm going to make sure the new brothers got it. You found it? Help them out. Brothers sit next to them. Help them out. You got it? Second, second, the second book of Ezra, the sixth chapter, verse 54. We're going to read verse 54 and 55. The book of second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. You see that word there? And after these, all these arguments that the preceding verses was talking about, after all of those arguments, he says, Adam also, this is, this is Ezra's talking to God, talking to the Most High. He says, Adam also, whom what? Thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. God, you made Adam the Lord of all the creatures of the planet Earth. Adam was a God, so you can understand. Adam was the power on this planet. He says, and after he said, and after all these, after all these things, Adam also, whom thou God have made Lord of all thy creatures. Go ahead. Of him come we all. Of Adam come everybody. Go ahead. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. And also the people that God has chosen. Who came out of Adam that God chose? Israel. So now the, the case is getting ready to be made what belongs to Israelites. Go ahead. All this have I spoken before thee. All these arguments have I spoken before you, O Lord. Why? Because thou madest the world for our sakes. Because thou, you God, you made the world for our sakes. You made the planet earth for us. You see that? Thou madest the world for our sake. Go ahead. Read on. As for the other people. And as for the other people that come out of Adam. Go ahead. Which also come of Adam. Go ahead. Thou hast said that they are nothing. All of the other nations are nothing. God says, but you are the Israelites and the whole planet earth was made for you. So once you have that kind of, okay, that's enough on that. Go back to where I was at. Once you have that kind of understanding in your head, you can no longer think like an inferior being. You have to defy that. I have a book called Black America. You must remember you must return. It says white America stole it, but black America have to return it. Richard Williams, that's the man that wrote that book. And he makes the point, he says that as we are coming up out of slavery, we must make it our our everlasting attempt, I'm not using the words that he used. He said that we must maintain to never allow the perpetuation of slavery. Anything that brings you back to a slavery mentality, you must fight with every fiber of your being to not go back to a slave mind. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, we're not, like I said, now, let's go back to the Matthews. Thank you, brothers. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. So, again, when we were setting, we was in IUIC, and we were making moves, and we had to have vision. That's what we read earlier, right? Where there was no vision, the people perish. Y'all all right? Y'all with me? Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Go ahead. A city that is set on a hill. So us being the light of the world, that means we are the powers of this planet. And the earth is waiting to be illuminated by you. The earth is waiting to be illuminated by you. And it is frantically, desperately, earnestly waiting for the manifestation. In other words, waiting for us to come out of stupor. Come out of the stupor. To come out of negrodom. The earth is begging for that. Crying. Read. 
a city that is set on a hill. So we are to be that city that sits on a hill. Go ahead. Cannot be hid. And we are not to be hid when we set the city up. So if we are the gods and we are giving gods marvelous tools, these mental tools to fix our spirit, to fix our minds up, why would we believe that we can't move the way, we, that the way real men move? How about that? Why is it that we don't, well, when, when we say that we want to do something, here you got Negro lights. We've been through this challenge before. We were talking about, if y'all watch, we talked about when we opened up the school in New York, the headquarters school in New York. And uh, we congratulated all of the brothers and the sisters that took part in helping to get the building. We bought a building in New York. And that was a first in the Israelite community in terms of these Israelite groups coming out of, I guess you would say, the One West crew. Y'all all right? Y'all understand that? And when we were doing it, other people that sat in the same classroom with us was in doubt. Can you believe that? Some of the same people, I know them all. We're sitting in the same classroom, but yet when we go to make a move, I'm talking about in 2015, oh, they ain't going to do it because we was asking the people to help support us so that we can buy this building so that we can begin to make moves and buying buildings all over so that we can have sanctuaries for our brothers and sisters. Not only did we talk about uh, sanctuaries, we were talking about schools, we were talking about businesses, all of that. Go back and check the records. It's all on the YouTube, the, the, the way, way we speak. Y'all dig what I'm saying? So when we talked about it, people didn't believe it. Why? Because they still had a Negro mind. You can't do that. Hell, white man building stuff all over the place. We have no problem with that. But when it comes to us, we can't even organize to come together and do something. How the hell are you going to call yourself a leader and we're afraid to move? I can't stand that spirit. I read about the greatness of you in this Bible. And I see us like some drunk fools on the street doing nothing. That pisses me the hell off. Because I know how great you are. And I've seen greatness come from us outside of the scriptures, like rap music. I'm talking about conscious rap music. Brothers back in the 70s. I grew up in that time. Seeing in the brothers rapping over beating on the table and all of that. Turning into billions of dollars. There's no holding us back when we set our mind on something. And then you got the power of God behind you. You dig what I'm saying? That's the way we're supposed to think. That's the warrior code of God's men. And our women are supposed to understand that. Y'all all right? Y'all follow me? So, talking about in 2015... I'm originally from New York. Some of y'all know that. Maybe some of y'all don't, but I'm just telling you a little bit about myself. I moved down into the Carolinas about two years ago. Y'all all right? And I wanted to continue. When I say I, it's not, I, there's not a solo mentality here. We, the leadership, the deacons, the bishops, captains, officers, all of us, we all had a vision to bring forth more schools, to bring forth more sanctuaries where we can do different things to help bring in the brothers and the sisters so that they can have a place, a sanctuary to get their minds right. Let's show, let me show you that, that scriptural first. Give me Ezekiel eleven sixteen. That's the reason why the vision is going to work because we're following God's scripture. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen. Although God have gotten angry with us and he cast us far off in slavery. Cast us among thy enemies that hated us. Cast us among our enemies that, that robbed us of our name. Robbed us of our language. Robbed, of, robbed us of our God. Robbed us of our culture, language, all that. Our norms, took all that away from us. 
although God has put us among them. Listen to what God is going to say as we are among our enemies. Go ahead. And although I have scattered them among the countries. And, th and although I have scattered you among the countries. So we're scattered everywhere. The remnants of Israel. The Israelites that were scattered in slavery. Listen to what he said. Come on. Yet. Yet. Will I be to them as a little sanctuary. Yet will I God be to you brothers and sisters. A little sanctuary. A sanctuary is a safe haven. Listen to me now. A sanctuary is a haven of safety where you can come get your mind right. Y'all dig what I'm saying? So our vision stemmed from that. Sanctuaries with an S. So when we talk about overseas, we put sanctuaries there. When we go to this country, we look to set a sanctuary up there. Y'all know how we get down. Y'all have seen it. And we don't move like Negroes. Yes, we would get setbacks from some enemies that might be among us that might seem to try to derail what we're doing. And we stagger a little bit. But after the Most High slapped that garbage away from us, the Most High going to put us back on the track to keep things moving. Y'all understand what I'm saying? He will, he will sift the house of turncoats. Get them out of here. Those that hate this truth, those that hate this gospel, he got a, a, vacuum, a vacuum cleaner that will suck them out of here. I like that kind of language. Y'all all right? That's how you have to think when you're talking about being in battle mode to get things done. Can y'all dig it? I love that thing too because I don't want no, knuck no knuckleheads around me. When, I'm, when we're trying to make things move, I need things to move. We need things to move. That's how leaders operate. Leaders need things to move. Y'all all right? So I will say this here. Coming into the Carolinas, and I understand that the Most High is going to be bringing spirits all over. The Bible talks about 300, I mean 3,000 people repenting in one day. Where are they going to go? If we don't, if we as the leaders do not provide something for them, what kind of leaders are we? If we don't know how to organize the people, if we don't know how to organize resources to make things happen, what kind of leaders are we? Sitting up there with just shiny garments and this and that and the other and nothing's happening. What, what good is that? What good is that? And the people are still catching hell. You dig what I'm saying? So, coming to the Carolinas, we see that the body is growing. We see that the brothers and sisters, according to the scriptures, are coming into this Bible, coming into this truth because they are to repent. And our job as watchmen is to get sanctuaries and havens for the brothers so when i came down we started talking about putting our resource together and start looking for property here in the carolinas i'm talking about one that we own and i'm proud to say we've got it give the lord a hand and the reason why this was important the reason why this was important to note was because when you talk about building funds, I use that as a term because we never called it that. Uh, when people hear that, you hear situations where preachers, after they get to a certain number, what happened? The preacher run off, run off with the money and leave the people. I've seen this in Harlem. Right across the street from a, f a fish store that has to go to every day after work. Good, love that fish. <laughs> preacher... They built half, the building was half built. Beautiful, it was gonna be beautiful. I said, what the hell happened to it? Because it just sat there and it never progressed above that. And then the people that was, the people that run the fish store, he was telling, he said, man, you know that preacher ran off with other people's money? And the thing was still half there. Somebody actually came and finished it up, but it wasn't the same people that started it. Typical, right. So my point is, a lot of people are skeptical, especially following black folk. Because black people, that, you know, and the way we would, the way some of us think, we don't think about the body. We only think about our own selves. Because they taught us that in slavery with this me, myself, and I business. And this is never we. You, yourself, and I ain't going to never get nothing done. It's always going to take unity. It's always going to take the unified nation. It's always going to take that to make a move. 
What good is what good is I? I got a million dollars and everybody else got nothing. What does that what what could that do for me? What is that going to do? I turn around and everybody that I know is living in squalor. How in the world is that going? How how can I progress with that kind of mess? I need my brothers, my sisters, my nation to be put together in a unified body. That's how you make moves. You get one person that's on the top and everybody else is nothing. It's easy to pop him off. You dig what I'm saying? But we're, tra we're training, I'm going to use that word, we're training our brothers in this Bible. So when they knock me off, another one's going to come sit here and keep this work going. That's, that's my point right there. That's the point. You don't have to start all over. When they knocked off King and X, the whole nation start from the bottom all over again. Because there was nobody really to take their places. You dig what I'm saying? Rah, rah, go Malcolm. Go, go, go. And they hated Malcolm. They looked at Malcolm like he was radical and too, and too much this, too much that. So they kind of stayed away from him. Same thing with Dr. King. A lot of people thought he was all soft and all of that. Dr. King started speaking hardcore facts right before he was killed. Which is the reason why he died. Or why he was murdered. He didn't die. He was murdered. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So move as a team. Move as a nation. Then they know that if they knock me off or they knock off a couple of deacons here, there, they know that some brothers coming right behind us is going to keep this thing going. That's how we roll. Our elders taught us. Our elders ain't here no more. Y'all dig what I'm saying? Regardless of what happened to them, we had enough sense to keep this truth moving. But we're not going to live forever. You dig it? And the Most High is closing the doors on this system. So you want to be in the seat when the Most High brings the angels and Christ to come back and tear this whole system up. You want to be found in the, in the vineyard working. You dig it? So we have our sanctuary. And we are in the process of, because we always do our construction. Um, so I'll just name some of the things that's in it. I won't say, I, I want to say where it's at, but I don't want to say where it's at just yet because we haven't finished doing the work yet. But you know how we do. But I'll tell you this much. It's a huge, it's a huge space. It's a good space. Give the Lord a hand for that. Like f nearly 15,000 square feet. Okay. 15,000 square feet. Okay. And if y'all know anything about us, y'all know how we are with the architectural and the plans and all of that because we're going to get in there and we're going to do our thing. Y'all all right? Y'all need to see any documentaries? We got two up on uh, when we did the school in New York. Um, when we did the grand opening in 2015, you could see the work that we did there. We turned that building into the sanctuary and we put all kinds of things in it and it's still up to this day. So we are school number two that we own. So the, um, the progress is continuing to go all throughout. Y'all all right? Without revealing too much information, but this is the plan of leader. Within the school, I'm just going to name some of the things that we're looking to have inside of it. Full functioning kitchen with service window and all of that. We're going to have a young men's, a, a young men's classroom. Going to have a young women's classroom. These are different areas now. We're going to have um, uh, a radio station. Going to have a recording studio. Uh, original royalty uh, place set up. We're also going to have the uh, children's room. We're going to have the sanctuary, of course, where everybody come together. Full bathrooms, multiple stalls for men and women. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, leadership room, we're going to have that. Council rooms, we're going to have all of, of all that stuff. So I'm just naming just a few of the things without giving too much information. Also, a room for the sisters who are with young children that need to lack the nursing room, lactation room, those kinds of, we're going to have that as well. Okay, so it's going to be a pretty elaborate kind of place. But we're going to work 
hard to get that get that building up to snuff. Y'all dig it? That's how we get down. Give the Lord a hand for that. And we give all honor and praise to the Most High. The opposition that we faced in the beginning was fighting against the Negro mind because you can imagine being that it was the first school that was done in the whole Israelite community. I'm talking about the Israelites that come out of the one west. So you can imagine the resistance that we had. Oh, they ain't going to get it done. They ain't going to get it done. That blah, blah, blah. We heard all of that. They're going to run with the money. They're going to do this and they're going to do that. They said all that. Y'all dig it? All that. We ain't had to listen to none of that. We said, you know what? God says that there's 144,000 and the one-third of the righteous that's going to that's gonna believe in this truth and going to get it done. They said, well, we will work with them. And they put their money where their mouth was. And what did the Most High allow us to do? Produce the building. And now we've done it again. Y'all all right? Give it up. So in the next few, I would say in the next few months, we will be giving reports on the progress. Um, and after it's all done, like we did before, all of the men and the women and the brothers and sisters that supported this effort, we put together a documentary congratulating everyone and giving everyone their proper accolades, their, their, their proper due respect, all of that. Because that's how we get down. Y'all all right? So I just want to throw that in there. Uh, all right. So now let's get back to the class. Mindset of the warrior. In order for us to do this, the men that's at war, to get this thing done, because like I said, when we, was, when we dealt with the building before, we did it in a sense where it wasn't just the men. Our women had to be with us. Our women had to be there supporting us. You can imagine what's, well, how hard that work was. And we had full-time jobs. I used to leave from work to go directly to the building. We, had to, we built showers in the, we had a shower in the building. Shower there, had to change the clothes and go back to work. I did that for a month, making sure that that building went up properly. That's how not only myself, but all of the brothers and the sisters that participated in making sure that that building get up there. We didn't have time to go out and eat and go to fast foods or whatever. Sisters understanding the mission brought food to us while we were working so that we did not have to stop. We can eat and get back to work. They had the same mind that we had. That's what we're trying to do again. Vision. It takes vision. You have to plant that vision in the brothers' minds and in the sisters' minds. If there is no vision, we will all be selling dope. Think about where we would be. Like I said last night, where would we be? Or where would I be? I, I, I use this on my own self. Where would I be had it not been for this truth? Where would I be had I not come into this Bible? I know I was burning, still in New York somewhere, probably dead. You dig what I'm saying? Because there's so many ways that you can go. When you have no vision, you can get led into anything. And that's not just New York, that's anywhere. Y'all just as bad down here as in any place else. You ain't fooling me. They'll lose, they lose a brother over here and never find us behind in like five years. So I ain't, ain't going to go there. But y'all understand what I'm saying, right? All right, let me get back to my lesson. Where was I reading at? A little sanctuary. Yes, Ezekiel. Finish that up in Ezekiel. And then give me that Psalms 82. And Cap, I'm going to let you bring out some things when I'm done with this, all right? I know I had a lot here, but I ain't going to be able to get it all in. But I'm going to try my best to get as much as I can. Finish reading that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 16. <clears throat> Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I cast them far off among the heathen, mm -hmm. and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet... Will I be to them as a little sanctuary? Yet will I, God, be to the Israelites who are looking to repent. That's what it's talking about. I will be to them a sanctuary and a haven for them to come and repent. And when they come in these doors, they're supposed to find righteousness. They're supposed to find upstanding men and women. They're supposed to find children that are in order. 
They're supposed to find those things when they come in here. And then they will say, like I said, when I first walked in, the brothers told me, after I realized the beauty that I just walked into, they told me, welcome home. And that thing rang bells to my spirit, even to this day. Because I literally felt like I was lost everywhere else prior to that day. When I walked into the school, I don't know if y'all, because I tried to, I tried to uh, convey that feeling to y'all. And I don't know if y'all could feel the way I felt when I first came into these doors and learned this truth for the first time. After being told that I was everything else but the children of the Most High and was shown who I was in the scriptures. And I realized all this time I was a child of the Most High. I was a man of God. There was no better feeling than that. And that's why I have not left this truth to that day. And that was in 1991. You dig what I'm saying? So this has been a long road. But it's a road that I enjoy because I get to see my brothers and my sisters coming to get themselves right. And then I read in the scripture and I see the vision of where we're going. And that's all I need. Y'all all right? All praise to the most high. So now, read. 16 and 17. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary. Yet will I be to the Israelites who are coming into this truth to repent. I will be unto them as a little sanctuary. Go ahead. That's what these buildings are being, being uh, purchased for and converted so you can understand. Go ahead. In the countries where they shall come. And why would, why would this thing be such a hard thing to do? You know how much money that black people give to the American economy every year? I can't even count the number. What is it? Two, like $2.5 trillion. And we don't make a toilet paper factory. I ain't talking about blacks across the world. In America, black people, $2.5 trillion. No grocery stores, no nothing. But yet, when we buy a building, they say, you sold out. Negroes! So we had to go into this truth with that hard steel head, like I said. Like Ezekiel talked about, my harder than Flint. I said, any Negro that says something that's, that's against what we said, the hell with him. The hell with this one, the hell with that one. We have to be pragmatic about getting this work done. And shunt everything that is against our direction. That's how you have to be. That's what men do. Y'all understand? Everybody's with me? Okay. Now, finish reading that. Oh, give me uh, Revelation 7 and 9. Read that again over here. Where you was at? 16 verse. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 16. Then after that, I want 7 and 9. Come on. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen. Although I, God, have cast off my Israelite people because they disobeyed me. I've cast them among the nations. Go ahead. And although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary. Yet will I be to the Israelites a little sanctuary. In the countries where in they. The, in the countries with an S. So it's not going to be just one school. In the countries. In the states, so you can understand. In the cities. Can you dig it? In the countries. So we got a lot of work to do. A lot of work. I ain't got no damn time to play. We ain't got no time to play. We got to fulfill this. Why? Because our people are repentant. We're going to read that. Read that again. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God. Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Where in the countries where the Israelites shall come to repent. So you can't tell them to just all gather around a computer. Gather around in the brother's home in his basement and all that. No. They need space. Yeah, they're trying to mess us up with the corona and all that. Yeah, we understand that. But the Most High is in control of this thing, not Esau.
Can you dig it? Most High gonna make this thing happen. It's, so as it is written, so shall it be done. That's all I care about. If it's in the Bible, it's gonna it's gonna go down, baby. It's gonna happen. It's gonna go down, regardless of how hard you try to stop it. Nothing gonna stop it. So in the countries where we should come, read that statement again. Yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. And in the countries where the people shall come to repent. Let's see where that's also written at in the Bible. Give me Revelation 7 and 9. This is, what, this is how this is going to happen. When you read the seventh chapter of Revelation, it starts off talking about the 144,000. It names 12 tribes. 12,000 out of the out of every tribe which is 12 which gives you the 144,000 those are the leading men those are the leading men of the nation of Israel it's going to be 12,000 out of each tribe that's going to give you the 144,000 at the end of the eighth verse is where the 144,000 is accounted for y'all all right yes, then you have the one-third let's show you where we get the number the one-third from give me uh somebody else give me Zechariah 13 and 8 let me show you where you get the one-third from so you can understand the big responsibility that we have. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Okay, the brother's looking for it. You found it? We're in the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and verse 8. Help him out, help him out. You got it? We're reading about the destruction that the Most High is going to bring when he comes to deliver us out of captivity. So these temporal, so you can understand these sanctuaries that we have, this is not the kingdom of heaven, but this is a step that is required in preparing the people for the second coming of Christ. Because when, the, when, the, when Christ come back with his big black feet, everything going to burn up. And we like that because we're going into Jerusalem and we're bringing our slaves with us. All of the nations going into slavery. That's, that's how the most High are going to honor us for repenting. That's how the Lord is going to honor us for turning back to him. He's going to give us the whole planet Earth as we once had it before. All praise to the Most High and his son Christ for, for making that happen. You got it? Let's read. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So two parts. Of the nation of Israel shall be cut off and die. Because two parts, meaning two thirds of the nation of Israel is not going to repent. When you read in the Revelation when it talks about the blood shall be up to the horse's bridle and all of that, that's a lot of Israelites dying. Most is going to kill them for not repenting, so you can understand. The rebellious turncoats and all that, the Most High going to kill them. That's what that's talking about. Judgment day. That's what it's talking about. Read it again. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two parts therein of the nation of Israel shall be cut off and they shall die. Go ahead. But the third shall be left therein. But the third. So it's letting you know that's three parts to the nation of Israel. So 66% of the whole nation of Israel is going to get wasted. So that's like 60 cents out of 66 cents out of your dollar ain't going to work ain't going to mean a damn thing. Only 33 cents is going to be worth to spend. That's how rebellious our people are that the most high has got to kill two thirds of them. That's a big number, ain't it? So it's no accident that you brothers and sisters walked in here. This is your chance. To get yourselves right. That's why I was going to have that scripture read. Which I'm still going to read it. To make sure that your calling and election is sure. That you come in. Give me that real quick. 
since I touched it, because I don't think I'm going to hit it again once, I'm, once I get rolling again. You want the Peters 1 and 10? Yes, sir. So you brothers and sisters being called in here, you need to be mindful of what state your mind is in. Being rebellious. Wives and women being rebellious against their husbands. You don't recognize what you're doing. You don't recognize what you're doing. Clicks and all that garbage. All that madness got to go. Click is another word for discord. You got it? Yes, sir. Read. It's the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. So I'm, so I'm bringing this out because it's, it's, it's important for us, like I heard Captain bring out once before, examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you're not your own selves, that Christ died for you. That's what we need to do. So once you come into this truth, check your own spirit to make sure that you're in the right mind friend, the mind, mind state that you're in the right spirit all the time that you're in this truth because you can just as easy as you came in you can be taken out by some foolishness can you imagine how many people I've seen coming to this truth from 91 up to now just think about that just let that ride through your brain a little bit since 91 up to now can you imagine the amount of people I've seen come and learn the same gospel and they back out there doing foolishness because they did not examine themselves. They did not give diligence like we're about to read. Read it. The book of Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. To make your calling and election. You've been called into this truth, you men and women. You've been called in here, but your seat is not guaranteed. The Bible talks about four different groups of Israelites. When you read the book of Mark chapter 4. When it talked about the sower and the seed. That was the first group. The man comes to hear the gospel and immediately Satan comes and tells him something and boop, he's gone back out. That first group is gone. The second group came in, learned a few scriptures. He thought he was it. Then when some trials came his way, he fell back out. That's the second group. The third group came in, learned a little bit, but because he still had lust of riches and other things and lust, he never could get his mind right to, to endure in his truth. For the lust of other things and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches took him out. That's the third group. The fourth group is the one that the seeds fell on good ground and they multiplied their good works in this truth. Those, that's the only group that's going to make it. So when we call, when we give diligence to make our calling and election sure, you want to all make it into that last group. You don't want to be the, the, the first group that got taken away by somebody saying something to you. The minute you heard the gospel, Satan came and said something, boom. Oh, and you left the, God, you left the truth, the gospel, and you're back out in the street. That's the first group. You don't want to be the second group that came in here and thought you was Mr. Scriptures, Scripture know-it-all. But then when some trials came concerning those scriptures, you didn't know what to do because you didn't study. That group was gone. The third group came in, but because he had ties into the world, like music or whatever, movies, whatever the case may be, he couldn't let it go. And that pulled him out. Cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. That group was gone. The last group is the group that stayed. So you want to give diligence to make sure that that's you. Y'all all right? So that's what this haven, well, that's what we're trying to do in here. To help you endure so you can make it into that fourth one. And none of our seats are guaranteed. None of us. Read. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For if you do these things by keeping these commandments, commandments, sisters, the commandments, is for you to obey your husband. If your husband is a knucklehead, we'll deal with him. You ain't got to worry about that. If I'm a knucklehead, there's men that deal with me. And then the most high sees all. But there should be no rebellion. 
Y'all know we don't tolerate foolishness in here. Y'all know the record. Y'all seen the record. Y'all know how we get down. Where we at? That was it? Yes, sir. Okay, go back over here. Revelation. Who's reading? Seven and nine. Book of Revelation, chapter seven, verse nine. Now, I'm reading this because I'm coming back from what we read in Ezekiel about the sanctuaries where the people shall come to repent. Everybody's with me. Right? Y'all with me? Back in Ezekiel 11 and 16, that's what I, that's now I'm going to read Revelation 7 and 9 to talk about that group. That's, that's the one third. A reason why I talked about the one third was because 144,000 have already been accounted for from verses 1 to, well, actually verses 4 to 8. The 144,000 is covered in there. So then after that came the rest of the one third. And the one third is what we read about in Zechariah. Because two thirds are going to be killed off and one third is going to be left. That's the other part that's going to be joined in what we're reading in, in Revelation. Everybody's with me? Let's read that. Revelation. Chapter 7, verse 9. Come on. After this I beheld. After the 144,000 were sealed up. And lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. Why is it saying that this great number in the ninth verse was talking about all nations and all tongues and all of that? Because the novice in the scriptures would think that's actually talking about other nations. That's all talking about Israelites that were scattered. Give me Luke 20, give me Luke 21, 24. This is how they got scattered. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. Mm-hmm. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. When Jerusalem was overthrown in 70 AD. The Romans came and destroyed us. Destroyed our temples. Destroyed our nation. Destroyed Jerusalem. And the, and the ones of us that they didn't kill in Jerusalem, they sold us into slavery. That's what it's talking about there. It's, it's, it's in a few places where we were sold into captivity. Out of 70 AD, we went into slavery. We were slaves in Rome, so you can understand. This is a lot of history that our people don't know. The Romans enslaved us in Rome. And then during the time of Rome, we overthrew Rome, and that's what brought in the Dark Ages. That was us. That was ruling all throughout Europe. Okay? When you heard about what they called the Moors of Spain, that was us. Now, that's just one part of the history. It's a small part of the rest of the history. But that's how we got there. How did these black people get into Spain? Because they were the ones that were sold in, into slavery coming out of 70 AD. When, when Rome came and destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. Read that again. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So the Israelites shall fall by the edge of the Roman swords. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And the Israelites shall be led away captive captive into all nations that's how we got into all nations that's the reason why it's saying what it's saying there in revelation because these are the remnants of those slaves of our israelite people that was sold into captivity give me deuteronomy 28 64 saying the same thing there deuteronomy 28 64 is actually talking about the slave trade literally so it's, it's written in a few places where we were sold like the book of joel talks about it the children of Jerusalem and the children of Judah have you sold to the Grecians, meaning to the white people, so-called white people, the Greeks. We were sold into slavery then too. The you got it? Yes, sir. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So if our people are scattered from one end of the earth unto the other, are we going to be speaking different languages? Talk to me. Are they going to, are they, they're going to, even some of them are going to look different because of that. But they're still the seed of Israel because a man carries the seed. Everybody's all right? So now let's go back to Revelation. Now you understand the reason why this is saying what it's saying here. The book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people, and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. Clothed with white, white robes and palms in their hands. What that mean? That they've repented. How did they repent? 
because they came into the sanctuary. That's how they learned. They learned to repent because they learned the commandments in the sanctuary. That's what that's talking about. Do y'all understand that? Let's go back to Ezekiel. Read, read 16 and 17 together now. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Go ahead. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people. So the most High say he's going to gather us after we repent, when we come to these sanctuaries and get our minds right. After that, he's going to take us up out of here when the destruction comes. Read. And assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. So we're going home after this. So there's a method to our madness. So you can understand. So when we're talking about getting these schools and properties and all that to build the nation of the, to help, help the Israelites to repent, there's a reason for it. Our people must learn this truth and get themselves right so that we can get the hell out of here. Y'all all right? That's the purpose of that. Now, thanks for that. Now let me just turn the attention a little bit to this here, and then Cap, I'm gonna let you come in. We got we got a little bit of time, a little bit of time. I'm gonna be quick. Give me the book of. Um, I'm going to do this pretty quick. I've got a lot going on. Give me Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Let me read that. I had a lot here, but I got to bring it on down. It's the book of Ephesians chapter Now, I'm going to move kind of fast because time is running. So this is where I want you all to write the scriptures down and try to retain as much as you can. Ephesians 5, 22. This is talking about. Uh, you know what? Give me Matthew first. Give me Matthew 19, verse 5 and 6. We need this first. Brothers and sisters, when they come into this truth, they learn this gospel, they learn these commandments, and then they get married. And when they get married, we read these scriptures here. Mostly. Sometimes we add a little more to it, but we basically bring these scriptures out when the brothers and sisters get married. Okay? Matthew uh, 19, verse Five. Come on. Book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 5. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife. So that's the most high talking about what we men ought to do. We warriors. So we not only are we warring in the battlefield and trying to establish these sanctuaries, trying to establish his gospel, to establish his truth, to establish his nation, to prepare us for the second coming of Christ. That's our job. That's one battlefield. The other battlefield is to get our sisters to get their heads right, to reverse the curse of slavery on them. Y'all understand that? Go ahead. And they twain shall be one flesh. And the two of them should be one. The two of them should think like you. That's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about you becoming her. She has to become as you because you're a man. She's a woman. Y'all dig it? She's supposed to be a reflection of you. Not the other way around. Do y'all understand that? Read. Wherefore, they are no more twain. Wherefore, they are no more two individuals. But one flesh. But one flesh. So that means the two of them are supposed to be like you. You and her are supposed to be like you. She's supposed to be a reflection of you. That's why she takes on your name so you can understand. You don't take her name on. She takes your name on. Y'all understand that? That's the purpose of that. Now, give me Ephesians 5. A lot of sisters are coming into the body, say they're repenting, said that they are about this truth. Well, sometimes that's true, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes they hear scriptures like this and they start cringing and trembling. What kind of foolishness is that? Could believe it or not, those four groups of Israelites pertain to them too. Read. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You remember? So your husbands is the lords of this planet. That's why he's saying that. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as you would unto the Lord. Do y'all hear this? So what the hell do I hear with people talking about something? I ain't got to listen to him. What the hell does that even mean? 
If he's wrong, we're going to check him. And if we don't check him, God's going to check him. But your job is to follow him. Unless he's trying to sell your behind out on the street or crack up with some madness, that's different. But let me say this here too, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave this part out. I didn't want to go here, but I gotta touch it. A lot of women are coming into IUIC, and they have been around the block a little bit. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, because when you come into this truth, everything is new. But when they come in, they have been abused, took all kind of crap from Negroes out there in the street. Gave them kids, all of that. And the man abused them. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Then they come in here and marry you. Here you trying to live right. And here they talking about something you don't measure up to their standards. Let me say this here. You're the best damn thing on this planet right now. That's right. You're, you're the cream of the crop. You're the ones that's cleaned up. You're the one that's trying to get your mind right. And these women know that. I hear talks. Oh, go get you one of them IUIC men because their leadership ain't going to let them have no multiple wives. Ain't going to let them cheat on you. They ain't going to let them do this. This is how they talk. Can I get a witness? Then they say, well, I'm married to him. Now, he can't leave me because if he try to divorce me, he's going to face all kind of consequences. So they know this. And instead of them being happy that they found the right man, they're giving them hell. They're giving them problems. That ain't no submit. That's a damn demon. I'm going to jump the gun. Give me Micah 7 and 10. Women ain't supposed to be an enemy to you. You ain't supposed to have no second battlefield, man. Your battlefield to establish this nation, your woman is supposed to be with you. Not, not you feeling like you're climbing up a science sandy way. Abating the courage. Like the scriptures said. I had all them scriptures I want to read out. Brother said part two. <laughs> read. The book of Micah chapter 7 verse 10. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it. What is it that she shall see? The resurrection and the judgment. And she's going to see the Lord lifting you and delivering you from that scornful woman. That's what he's talking about. Read it again. Then she. When the Most High is watching. Brothers is trying to do the right thing. And they got a wife or woman that's trying to destroy him. Saying all kind of evil things to him. Bringing down his courage. And he's got to fight this whole damn planet. Where's his aid? Where's his help me? God sees this thing. Read. Then she that is mine enemy. What? That is mine enemy. Why would she be considered an enemy? Is an enemy a help meet? Hell no. A help meet, an aid that's supposed to comfort you. She comforted niggas in the world that ain't gave her nothing. Then coming here among you, here you trying to walk straight and she giving you all kind of problems. Go ahead. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her. With, with <laughs> because she's going to realize who she shamed. She's going to realize that you are the gods. She, although the whole kind of class has been taught about it, she never accepted it, but she's going to see it that day. Go ahead. And shame shall cover her. And shame shall cover her. Let's see what's going to happen after that. Which said unto me, where is the Lord thy God? Where is this God you're talking about? Talking about some you the you the powers. You the prophets. When Christ said a man gets no, no honor in his own home, this is what he's talking about. Go ahead. Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. She's gonna be put to damn death. That's what's gonna happen to her. So you women, you have a responsibility to get your minds right too. And come out of this Willie Lynch foolishness that some of y'all are still entertaining. I'm telling you straight. I don't give a damn if you like me or not. I'm going to tell you what this Bible says because that's what a watchman does. It's not to be popular. <laughs> it's not to be popular. That's funny, that daggone sound effect. That's, that's Captain Barnabas as we do. Ooh.
Give me Second Ezra 7. Give me Baruch first. This is, give me Baruch. This is, pertains to men and women, but I'm pointing this to the women for this particular class. But this is to men too. This is all of us, because we all did this. Baruch 4.28, read. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 28. For as it is what, for as it was your mind to go astray from God. All of us went astray from the Most High by breaking his commandments. And then when our women go astray by not honoring you as the men of the Lord, they're going astray as well. Because the scriptures say for them to submit themselves unto their own husbands as unto the Lord. Read. So being returned, seek him ten times more. So when we realize that we messed up, and when we realize that we mistreated our husband, I'm talking about to the wives now. If you realize you've been a demon to your husband, you're supposed to do what? Being returned in repentance, seek to please him ten times more. Meaning to really be an aid and a comfort to help him win on the main battlefield. Like all of the other women do in the other nations. Y'all all right? Y'all understand me? Now, 2 Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. The book of Second Edges, chapter 7, verse 10. And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. So he's going to talk about us returning back unto him and what's required. Read verse 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. There it is again. The Israelites, the world was made for Israel. Go ahead. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, I want y'all to pay attention to what we're reading now. And when Adam broke God's laws, listen what happened. Then, go, go ahead. Then was decreed that now is done. Then was decreed that is now is In other words, changes were made when Adam broke the laws of the Most High. Listen to these changes that happened. Go ahead. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow. Then were the entrances of the kingdom made narrow. Because in the beginning, before Adam broke the king, before he broke the laws, we was in the kingdom. We didn't have the foolishness that's going on now. The whole planet was underneath Adam's rule. And all of the children of Adam were supposed to benefit from that with no problems. But when sin came in, we lost it. And then the, then the, then the passage to get into that world became narrow, real small. Read. Full of sorrow and travail. So not only did it become narrow, it became full of sorrow, travail, trauma, like I talked about yesterday, slavery, disrespect, all of that stuff came as a result of being disobedient. So now the way to get into the kingdom is narrow and hard now. Go ahead. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. Mm, that's that's these trials that we're going through trying to get into the kingdom painful headaches here you come from war and you come home and your and your wife is sitting there looking at you mad no kind of rejoice no nothing that make you you that leave him going out and get drunk that's how some of the brothers think be in the bar all night long because he got to face a dragon when he come home after he done finished warring who the hell want to come home to that Read. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. And brought, so that was when it was open. It brought immortal fruit, meaning we live forever. No pain, no problems, no nothing. The kingdom of heaven, so you're going to understand. This is what we're talking about. This, we lost this because we messed up. And then the narrow, then the, then the way to get into the kingdom now became so small. The straight gate. That's what the scriptures say in another part of the scriptures. The straight gate. That's what it's talking about. The straight gate. Read. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. In other words, if we don't work hard, ten times more, like we read earlier, if we don't work hard, we ain't going to make it. If we don't endure, if we don't get rid of the nigga mess in our heads, if we don't get rid of the Willie Lynch garbage in our heads, we can forget about it. Two-thirds of us going to die here. That's what it's talking about. Two-thirds ain't going to learn this. Y'all understand? 
Read. Verse 14, come on. Verse 14, sorry. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. They can never get the kingdom if we don't go through these trials. So just like us, we're fighting on the battlefield to establish our own selves to be in accord with what the Lord work, wants. It's their job to get their selves right so that they can fit with you. There's no shortcut. She can't bypass you to get to the Lord. Let me say that. I got a personal relationship with God. Your personal relationship, God, is through your husband. Period. You don't come that way, your ass going to die. I'm going to just tell you flat. Y'all understand that? You men as men, you better wrap that thought around your head. You're not just some regular men. You're the gods of this planet, and I'm sick of seeing our people not think like that. Talking about what we can't do. And you sisters, you back these men up. Stop this BS. Go ahead, Cap. What you got for me? <laughs> I got 10 minutes. Two minutes? Yeah, it got 10. <laughs> hey, all praises. Hey, listen, not only that, what Dick is talking about, what I'd like to just also bring out is that, listen, you have to know these things. And before, the, before we even got here, they was already holding down Israel. They was holding it down years ago. Years ago, they was holding it down until this what a point in time that we're able to come into the gospel and for us to come and help do our part to help continue to build up the nation of Israel. What were we doing in 2015? What were you doing in 2000? They was laboring in this gospel. A lot of was playing marbles and shooting pool and hanging out on the corner spots, pitching to your people. But they labored in this gospel until we could start to build and get these sanctuaries up and running. Help me out, officer. Go back and let me get, um, give me Psalms, uh, 7317. Give me Psalm 7317. Because Deke was talking about the sanctuaries. We are talking about the sanctuary. We're in another one of our sanctuaries. There's many more sanctuaries to come. But I want to talk a little bit about the sanctuary and the work that we are doing. So we thank the most high for you all being here. But you have to be about our father's business. Read that what you got. I tell you what, before you go read that, go back and read uh go back and read eleven sixteen again, Ezekiel. Eleven sixteen again. Read that again. One more time. It's the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 11 and verse 16. Uh huh. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Where we are in the work must be done is so huge. Just the other day, we got somebody that was in one of the, uh, uh, it was either China or one of the uh, countries over there, and they were saying that we're watching y'all, and they're saying that we're trying to follow y'all. They scattered over there in a country we need to get over there and help them. they over there in another part of the world asking about us. That's the work that we're doing. We're scattered everywhere, and we have to get these people home. That's our calling. We don't. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered. That's what's happened with Israel United in Christ. We have to understand, and our people must know that we got to be set in order. What Deacon was talking about is being put in order. That's all he was telling us. As a wife, set yourself in order. As a husband, set yourself in order. Why? Because you're going to be leaders of your people. You're going to be able to help lead your sisters. There's much work to be done. Give me that in uh, 7317 of Psalms. The because these sanctuaries are everywhere. We need to establish these sanctuaries. We need them up. We need to help our people. Read on. The book of Psalm, chapter 17, chapter 73, verse 17. Uh-huh. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Start over again. Start over again. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Didn't nothing really change for any of us until we came home. Until they said, welcome home. You were stuck like Chuck. You was having a bad day. You had nine boyfriends already. But until we went into the sanctuary, what? Then understood I their end. That's when we understood the work that we must do. Now we understand the end, that we must be good wives. Now we understand that we must be good leaders. That's what I'm looking at. I just wrote them down right quick. You know, we're watchmen. We're husbands. We're leaders. We're soldiers. We're the sons of God. That's what we must be. That's what we must be about. This is the work that we have. That's what Deke was talking about in 2 Peter. We have to make our calling and our election sure. That's the work that we must do. 
Because a lot of us, we wouldn't understand until we came into the sanctuary. Read that again. Read 17 again. The book of Psalm, chapter 17, 73, verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, uh -huh. then understood I their end. That's when you begin to understand your history. That's when you begin to understand that you were chosen of God. That's when you begin to understand that we were renowned men. We didn't know that before. We didn't know nothing about our lives like that. Talk, walk around calling ourselves Browns. Talking about I'm a Hitchcock. You got to be kidding me. We didn't even know who we were. And so now that we have these sanctuaries and we're establishing across the earth, let me just give you a little history right quick. I'm not going to hold you long. Here it is. In 2013, that we set up an assembly and we reached out to leadership. The leadership assisted us and told us what to do. We started a little sanctuary in, in the city of Charlotte. We started there. A few of us, we started laboring, and the people began to come. Over a short period of time, two years later, there was another sanctuary that came about, and it was around about two 2015, we started the sanctuary that came up down here at Galilee. I think you all got started down here in 2015, 2017, and there was a sanctuary. That's, it came from the original school of Charlotte, so it birthed out the second school, which we call IURC Columbia, right? Okay, from that point on, we continued to labor in the vineyard. And so what did we have? Then there came another school that came out of Concord. It's the, we call it today IUIC Raleigh that came forth. And that was around 2018. Okay, all right, now here we are again. Two, two years later, get ready to open up another a school in the Carolinas, and we're opening up another school there. That'll be another school, fourth school, and then when we have the one that we still maintain and have in Concord, we have five little sanctuaries that came out of one school. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that. <laughs> All praise to the Most High for that. So it does matter when we help and do the work. It does matter being a good wife at home. It does matter when you're a silent wife at home. It does matter when the brother's trying to lead at home. It does matter when the brother's sitting there trying to labor on the vineyard and take care of his family. When you look around, the lights is on, there's food in the refrigerator, and you ain't cold. Thank, that, thank the most high for that man. You ought to be glad for that man. That's a good man. He's trying to tell you what to do. So be faithful. Help that man, sisters. Help him labor in the vineyard. Put your brick in. Help the sisters to continue to do the work. And, you know, when you look at the bottom line, you're going to be blessed for that. You're going to be blessed if you continue to endure with that prophet. Let me call him another name. I'm going to call him another name. I'm going to call him a soldier. I'm going to call him another name. He might be your husband. I'm going to call him another name. I'm going to call him a watchman. But, yeah, I'm going to call him a leader of the nation of Israel. That's what he is. All right. We love y'all, Israel. We appreciate it. Thanks, Deke, for that couple of minutes. Officer uh, Gedaliah, you got something? You good? Deke? Well, all praise to the Most High. Let us take, I hope that y'all can take what y'all heard in this classroom and use it as, uh, and use it to uh, better yourselves. This is always medicine. Sometimes the medicine hurt a little bit. You know, a lot of medicine don't always taste good, but it's better for you. And it helped us to examine ourselves and get ourselves right. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to get the kingdom, all of us. Y'all understand that? All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.